All right, here we are. Another uh, Tiger Bait post game show brought to you by attorney uh, Kenneth P. Haynes. And uh, I think it was what we thought it would probably be uh, snow, Alabama hangover, uh, typical LSU Arkansas. And um, it was an ugly win. But uh, like uh, Brian Kelly said, um, you know, it's, it's what you expect in the SEC. And you got to sometimes you got to grind them out. And so I think we've got a lot to talk about today. And what a game by Harold Perkins, obviously. Uh, like I tweeted out earlier, um, there's going to be a monumental performance by another SEC defensive player in some of the games later today to uh, take away a second straight SEC defensive player of the week. Uh, oh, that's not going to happen. Just, he is just unbelievable. And um, I took a peek over at one of the uh, Texas A&M message boards, and there was no less – then four different uh, thread titles uh, moaning and groaning about uh, Harold Perkins, which they seem to do every week, and how uh, devastating of a recruiting loss that was to them. So that's always enjoyable. But um, Preston, what were your thoughts on the game? Well, you look at this game, and it had all the recipe, all the ingredients for uh, a letdown game, okay? You're talking about big win over Alabama, the emotional highs. It's hard to keep that emotional energy that high after that for the next week. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff. We know this team doesn't like 11 a.m. kickoffs. We saw how groggy they looked against Tennessee. That's just not part of the culture here, okay? Then you go on the road to an SEC West opponent, one who you're overlooking. Just inherently, they've kind of had a down season. And it's sub 40 degrees you know they're literally shoveling ice off the field so all these things put together and then you put in the kj jefferson's out so they turn to a backup quarterback who you have less film on and then they turn to a third string quarterback who you have even less film than malik on and by the way different completely different play style so all the ingredients were there for an upset for for a letdown game and it was a letdown game L lsu probably should have handled arkansas a little more firmly than that particularly with the way the defense played but you know what mike in the sec a win is a win is a win and now lsu finds themselves about two quarters away from a trip to atlanta if Alabama can come back down 14-7 against Ole Miss. Yeah, keep a, keep an eye on that. I don't have that queued up. So, uh, But, guys, as usual, uh, please, please hit the uh, share button uh, and to your Facebook, your Twitter, your all the groups. Much appreciated when you share uh, our post-game show around. And, of course, hit the like button if you're enjoying the show. Um, I, I think uh, – we ought to have a, a nice one today. I think a lot of people are straggling in. Um, but um, spread the word that we're live, and um, that's uh, very much appreciative. And so, yeah, um, they hit the eight-win mark, which is where I had them capping out. And um, uh, ten wins is could be a real probability or possibility. UAB next week, obviously, and they're going to want to take one game at a time. But um, – uh, like Brian Kelly said uh, in the post game, you know, there's a lot that they can uh, point to that went wrong today and that, uh, yeah. things they need to fix. But it's also just one of those deals where you could have pre written. I mean, th that last series at the two minute mark, uh, I posted in our in game thread that, uh, okay, here we go. We're about to have two negative plays uh, from Jade, uh, fr from the LSU offense. And then Jaden Daniels is going to be in a third and long. And of course that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, you get a bad Bramblet punt, but luckily for him, it rolls beautiful. Roll. Um, and then the defense has to do their thing. And of course, Harold Perkins did it again. And, uh, that sealed the victory for LSU. Um, bright spots offensively. I don't know where you go. I think Josh Williams had some nice runs. Kayshawn Butte, uh, with a real nice reception, um, but other than that, uh, offensive line had their issues. Um, Coach Odom over at Arkansas did a really good job of uh, getting after Jaden Daniels today and disguising some things. LSU just could not get on track. And, um, and I'll also add, I really would like to know uh, if there were any LSU players that actually poured themselves a cup of chicken broth. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that has to be a Yankee thing. Of course, someone will correct me. I like chicken noodle soup. But I'm not drinking straight chicken broth. 
Give Man, me the hot I, shot. I, look, I saw something, some sports science tweet about chicken broth being good for preserving your muscles in the cold. Some weird explanation like that. You know, it was like, I remember when I played football, we had a weird stretch where people, we had too many cramps. So they gave us pickle juice on the sideline and started making us all drink pickle juice. And it's like, man, I don't know if making your players chug that nasty stuff helps or hurts, but if there's science I behind I it. Vinegar was, I thought vinegar was a diuretic. Well, uh, look, I, don't, I know salt makes you retain water, so they really want you drinking salty juice, man. I don't know. It didn't seem to help very much. Absolutely. Um, Dell says, go Tigers, win, baby, win. Um, Dwayne Official says, give Perkins the butkus. And uh, Prickly Magoo, go Tigers, Perkins is him. Yeah, it's the same that uh, Perkins kind of came on too late taking this amount of snaps on the field because if he had been playing early on, yeah, he would be up for awards like that. Uh, I don't really see a better defensive player in the country. I mean, obviously I cover just LSU. I asked people straight up, has anybody in the country had a better defensive performance than what Perkins did today? We're talking eight tackles, four sacks, Okay, and, and two strip sacks. He forced two fumbles, two key turnovers, including the game sealer, but then also had a third one that I thought really should have been. It looked like that ball popped straight up to me. So really should have been three turnovers, if you ask me. Uh, I, I certainly haven't seen a player have an impact playing just defense since Tyron Matthew. Um, we've got everything up on Tiger Bait right now. We've got uh, Preston's postgame story. We've got Brian Kelly's uh, post-game video. We've got uh, Sam Pittman's uh, post-game press conference and um, Brian's analysis. And um, so we've got a lot there. And, uh, of course, last night I was in Covington uh, to see Holy Cross at St. Paul's. And, boy, I really like Kobe Young from Holy Cross. Uh, he is highly underrated uh, with the current three-star that I've seen on various networks. I'm going to have that uh, video in an interview with him uh, on Tiger Bait uh, Monday. So if you're not a Tiger Bait subscriber, go subscribe. You can try us out for a week for one dollar. And like I always say, uh, try us out. Uh, choose the annual package uh, versus the monthly. Uh, you're basically getting three months free when you when you go that route versus the the monthly. Um, yeah, here we go. Joshua Forbes, uh, Bama's struggling with Ole Miss. Um, Kenny Mack, that Ohio State player, that one game is the only one I can think of. Yeah, someone tweeted that at me. They didn't give me the full box score, though. I guess he forced two fumbles. But, yeah, I mean, look, uh, it, it, there's no way it was better than what Perkins did today. It might have been as good. But, I mean, even, even the plays where Perkins wasn't showing up on the box score, think about how many bad passes he forced. I mean, that, that, play, that quarterback, Malik Hornsby, he's, he's a track star, y'all. He runs a 10-7-8. 100 yard 100 meter dash and Perkins don't care he hunted him down so how many inaccurate throws how much of him just not being able to run the ball effectively how much of that whole game plan was just flushed down the toilet and they have to turn to a whole different quarterback because Perkins is that dude man he is that guy Joshua Forbes what's up Mike and Preston I, you, you hit that one uh, earlier uh welcome to the show Joshua um Brandon Reese, I'm glad we got the job done regardless of what happens between Bama and Ole Miss. And uh, he adds, um, LSU and Bama seem to be dealing with hangovers from last week. It's not just one of them. So, uh, look, that's, that it is a tough game uh, for both schools. And uh, LSU obviously going to play in 30-degree weathers at 11 in the morning, I think had the tougher task. Um, Hercules is number 40. I like that. <laughs> Hercules. I they like should that. name a street in Baton Rouge after him. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, that's like, a little maybe, early. Maybe, maybe some, some sort of Joe road. Bur we don't even have like, one for Joe Burrow yet. No, no, it's not too early. I, I think, look, like Perkins Road, something like that. That's a real good ring to it, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, Kenneth Haynes should have known if an SUV couldn't stop Perkins, Ole Miss would be no match. Should that have one known to if an SUV couldn't. All right, so I guess he's saying um, some player was like a truck trying to run him over. I don't know. 
Thanks for the super chat, Kenny. Of course, this show's it. brought by attorney Kenneth P. Haynes. I'm glad to have uh, Kenny in here. Um, James Phillips, why no outlet passes to the backs or tight end doesn't make any sense. Well, they sort um, of did one to Jare Jenkins, but he wasn't really playing tight end. Yeah, I, I, I thought, uh, look, I've said for for the last couple of weeks, you know, when have we questioned any of Denbrock's play calling? Well, you don't question play calling if they're executing and good things are happening. So there wasn't a whole lot of good things happening today, and now we're going to question Denbrock's play calling. I mean, it just it goes with the territory. Uh, Dwayne Official, Matt House won't be here long. Um, there's no way that uh, Matt House uh, leaves LSU for another D.C. job. Uh, the only no. way that uh, he would be, I think he leaves LSU, is for a head coaching job. Yeah. Uh, no whatever doubt. it takes to keep him, uh, Scott Woodward will make sure he, he gets it if, if it if it has anything to do with money. Um, you know, there's a lot of coach. I used to say all the time that I didn't think Dave Aranda had uh, any designs on being a head football coach because he never allowed his name to be floated out there. He just didn't seem like he had the uh, – uh, the charisma for it. And um, then, then all of a sudden he, he uh, after Orgeron ran him off and told him to find a job, uh, he's up for Las Vegas and he turns that one down, which good for him. And then he got the Baylor job, but um, I haven't heard anything about house wanting to be a head football coach. Uh, but at some point, most coaches in his position do, they want to be, get that job. Um, Joshua Forbes, was it the rush? Were, were the wide receivers covered that good? Or was it that uh, Jaden Daniels not wanting to mess up? Um, I think there were so many factors today. Uh, Arkansas did a darn good job rushing. Uh, LSU's offensive linemen across the board had issues at various times. Uh, Will Campbell took his lumps. Frazier took his lumps. Mason Taylor obviously wasn't the same as he was last week. Emory Jones took his lumps. Um, there was a whole lot uh, that uh, Arkansas did a good job today. I think that um, the coaches just could read that the passing game just wasn't clicking today. So they made an in-game adjustment and went with Josh Williams running the ball up the middle, got Jaden Daniels some room. By the way, Jaden Daniels had a better game running the ball than you might think. You look at the stat sheet, 19 carries, 10 yards. That looks pretty paltry. Okay, in reality, he had he got sacked seven times. Offensive line was also not clicking the way it should have today. Um, the, he, You take those sacks out, and he's got 12 carries for 51 yards, and all of a sudden that starts sounding pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, they just kind of adjusted their game plan, and it is what it is. You want to see that. You want your coaches to see the game, react, and make adjustments accordingly and get a win, even when it's not your best performance. Great coaches get wins with their C-minus game, and that's what we saw today. Well, this show, each and every week, our post-game show is brought to you by attorney Kenneth P. Haynes. Uh, let's hear from Kenny. Board certified family law specialist Kenneth P. Haynes is a highly skilled and experienced trial and appeal attorney with over 33 years of experience solving real legal problems for real people, specializing in all aspects of family law, divorce, support, custody, and property. Your standards are high, so are ours. For representation in Northwest Louisiana, call attorney Kenny Haynes at 318-222-2100. All right, and of course, uh, Kenny is the unofficial official lawyer of TigerBait.com, and he reserves the right to think most clearly for a paying client. And uh, if you need any legal uh, advice, uh, uh, an attorney for any reason in Northwest Louisiana, uh, Kenny is your guy. Um, all right, Kenny, is your, uh, Preston, is your mic off? Yeah, I kind of left it off for the break. I was like, I don't want to be caught on a hot mic there. Um, the ice chewing incidents got me paranoid, Mike. I'm telling you, I'm like, no more auxiliary sounds. I don't want people harassing me in the comments for a week. Josh Forbes, uh, man, I hated seeing McLaughlin playing for the enemy. 
Yeah, he's 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 done good for uh, Arkansas most of the year. Um, you know, I, I don't mind seeing uh, former players playing against LSU as long as they play like Eli Ricks did last week. Exactly. <laughs> McLaughlin had a good game. By the way, McLaughlin did make that tackle, that fourth down tackle, short. They they gave LSU a good spot, and there just wasn't enough evidence to overturn it on video. But LSU got away with one there late. Ended up not mattering because Perkins took care of business, made the sack anyways. They could have had four minutes; it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, Jay Gerald, coaching issues: wide receiver routes too far down the field, too long to develop, and Jaden Dams can't throw a ball away versus take. Yeah, there was several. At mm-hmm. least three that I said, man, why didn't he throw it away? Uh, that is something in his repertoire. Um, that I don't think he does enough of. Yeah, I think um, that's that's a lack of confidence in his arm strength while getting hit. He's probably a little worried that he's not going to be able to get the ball out of bounds while taking a hit. So if that's truly it, if he is worried about that, I'm okay with that. Just make your decision a little earlier, Jaden. He, he, he holds on a little too long because he can kind of wiggle out of tackles very well. Uh, Dwayne official Bama tied up. Go Bama go. All right. Um, wait, 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 wait. While we got that comment, I want to hit up people. Are y'all rooting for Bama today? Cause if, you know, if Bama wins LSU punches its ticket to Atlanta, y'all can go buy are. your tickets. Yeah. Everybody wants the easy route. Yeah, well, hold up. Hold up. I posted a poll. I think it was like 75%. So 25% aren't, but I think it's a flex. That, that That's a statement about your program that you're rooting for Alabama. Because they're so far behind you. What a flex. Mm-hmm. Um, Barry Barbier, Preston is a real winner today. Congratulations. Great to start building a family. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, uh, Peyton was born, uh, what, a week and a half ago? And yesterday was Preston's birthday. Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. Um, Peyton was born two weeks, two days ago. So Lil Pepe is uh, 2-0 and as a Tiger. Yeah, don't be doing any uh, crazy uh, uh, jackassery where y'all celebrate birthdays together down the line. No. Everybody gets, uh, the kid gets his separate day. No, what happens is, so my wife's birthday's next week. His birthday's going to be two weeks before mine. I don't have a birthday anymore. I just get older. Bart Smokey says he's pulling for Ole Miss. He hates Alabama. Yeah, see, I, I, there, there are a handful of fans who are going to be like that. And look, I'll make the argument. While it is a flex to be rooting for Bama, for recruiting and perception reasons, it, it's it's good for your program if Alabama at least appears to be on the decline. More fun if it goes to the A&M game. Man, why do you want that stress? <laughs> That makes no sense. By the way, my Twitter yeah. poll, 74% Bama, 26% Ole Miss. No, yeah, man. You want the, 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 the why do you, why do you, why do you want uh, anxiety look, that you don't need? I just, I look, I played my devil's advocate card just now for perception of the dynasty is over. Help you in recruiting battles. That, that's your one card. Why you might root for Bama. I like this one. Go Tigers. Harold Perkins row. <laughs> Harold Perkins row NIL deal. Nice. Can Perkins um, row afford that? Yeah. Kenny Mac four Oh nine ugly win, but a win. Yeah. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Good. Team. Yeah, you're, Good you're coaches win with C minus performances. Absolutely. Brett LeBlanc less stressful. If Bama wins, uh, secure the West says Jamie McCray. Um, and would love to see a three loss Bama. I get it, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I Abby get it too. Right. Hey, hey, I hate look, Bama, but this is business. I'm pulling for Bama. Go I Tigers. put the game on and I told my wife, I said, it, this game feels like no matter what LSU wins, because either you secure the West or Bama loses. Either way, this is great. Um, is there anything on the, um, I, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, box score and there's a whole lot of it that is similar. Um, and a lot of it's pretty pathetic as well. Um, uh, 284 total yards for LSU, 249 for Arkansas. Um, LSU did run the ball very well, but uh, you also had the sacks that uh, did a nice number on that. Uh, 239 sack yards. Um, that's not right. That, that's that's sack adjusted. You would have had 239 yards rushing if it weren't for the 41 yards of sacks. A 5.4 yard sack average. Is that right? 
No, that's how many yards you would have rushed for per carry if you had gotten the sack. So you took seven sacks for 41 yards. So do the math. So, someone do that math for me. 173 for Arkansas. Yeah, sack adjusted. Yeah. Um, four for 14 on third downs. They were six for 17. Uh, LSU was one for two on fourth downs. Um, Arkansas 0 for two on fourth. Yeah. So, man, a lot of it's pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Very similar box score. What stands out to me on this box score, I always kind of do a, a kind of a deep dive to really read into the meaning of it. Um, LSU actually got to pass the ball 15 times. Runs, 51. 51 runs to 15 passes. Uh, Barry Bar- all Sarira, who would ever thought we'd be criticizing an LSU win this season? Hey. Yeah, look, it, it, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. Look, you, you, you tune in, and you, nobody likes seeing ugly football, but, of course, you take the win. Um, you like to see uh, LSU take care of business, but, look, that, 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 everything that lined up today is really kind of what was expected. It was what you, what you thought it would get, be, and it's what it ended up being. Um, I don't know that anybody really thought that LSU was going to come out and throw it around for 500 yards today. Yeah, I didn't think that, but I, I did think LSU would take care of business by two or three scores. I thought LSU would be a little more dominant. I think I put 38-21, but clearly that freezing cold weather, the 11 a.m. kickoff, the emotional letdown was hitting the team more than we thought. I'll say this. I also think the offense would have opened up and scored more had there been a need for it. We've talked a bunch about how Denbrock calls his offense with a lead versus how he calls it when his back's against the wall. And it's two completely different offenses. Um, Barry Barbier, uh, also real. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. Uh, no, there was one I wanted to get real quick. Um, this one, uh, Jeff Garman, Brian Kelly wins his 18th in a row in November. Hey, that's a really good stat. Thanks for pulling that Jeff. That, that, that is amazing. November is for contenders. Um, Arkansas, good defensive plan. I think they absolutely did. They played good defense oh, yeah. today. The Hogs did. Um, Mind you, this is a team before the season started. A lot of people had going nine or ten wins. Uh, hadn't exactly played out their way, but, I mean, you know Arkansas is still a good football team, guys. Jeff Garman says it's the first time I pulled for Alabama in years. Let's see. Um, I'm scrolling up, guys, to get uh, some of your. Uh... Jay Gerald, former DBUs, as y'all noted. Interesting that McLaughlin uh, played well and Ricks got burned. Has Ricks surfaced this week on Instagram or, or, or Twitter with any comments or. I haven't seen anything. Um, why did McLaughlin leave? Um, there was some uh, scuttlebutt out there that uh, had he stayed, um, might he have fallen into one of those LSU um, off-season deals? I don't know. I thought there was an academic question maybe as well. Not sure. Um, yeah, I was worried when I saw hot cocoa and broth on our sidelines. I'm, I'm like I said, the the, the broth is. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, I'm kind of kidding with uh, Kelly, and is that being a, a Yankee or a Northeastern thing? Uh, I do like me some chicken and rice soup or chicken noodle soup, but uh, I've never drank. I've never uh, poured myself a cup of chicken broth. I know it's got to be very healthy for you. Um, but you I'll know, take the hot chocolate on my midweek show. I literally said, do not prepare for the weather, prepare for the game. Don't do like you did in 2014 and bring hot cocoa on the sidelines and have all this heating gear and, and you over prepare for the weather. And lo and behold, you get some gosh darn hot chocolate on the sideline and Preston's pissed off again. Parker is going through a uh, 
a bag of things over there, and I think he's found himself an old Chick Fil A sauce container. And he's gonna make, <laughs> he's gonna get himself sick. Um, poor Parker. Uh, the Bono, I love y'all. All right, the Bono, uh, glad to have you here. Um, chowder is the northern thing. There isn't a whole lot of food in the north that um, carries any weight down here as far as topping anything we've got. Yeah, put it next to the lobster bisque, huh? Yeah, I, uh, when I was at, uh, when Tiger Bait was uh, on Rivals and we had the five-star challenge several times in Baltimore, you want to talk about the worst food on earth. <laughs> uh brian turner old miss is shredding bama's front seven i'd never thought i would see that in my life by the way regardless of how bad a and m is their talented defensive front will give lsu uh, o-line problems by the way uh old miss just scored a touchdown 23 17 uh preston uh hit some comments real quick while i take this away from the dog <laughs> okay gotcha man Let's see here. Does anybody know of the status of John Emery? I didn't. I didn't see the injury. I'll tell you this though, guys got to work on holding on the ball. Um, two, two. Oh, I think one was a fumble, and one almost fumble. That's just. Oof, that is a liability. Uh, hardcore DIY. Eleven a.m. kickoffs are absolute hot fire. I agree, man. I will vote for any politician who goes out there and says I ban. 11 a.m. kickoffs in the state of Louisiana. You got my vote automatically. That That's the number one way you can improve my life is no more 11 a.m. kickoffs. I can deal with 2.30. Um, 11 a.m. is garbage. E e even 8.30 is kind of rough. That 8.30 p.m. one, just just give me 6 o'clock every game. Yeah, I I'm wondering how that's going to change uh, once uh, – you add Oklahoma and Texas into the league. Once CBS is out and clear, uh, what what are the are the game times going to be similar? I don't mind the five o'clock. I actually like the five o'clocks. The oh, five o'clock and the six o'clocks are great. Yeah, five it's and six o'clock, perfect. I don't like the eights. The eights, eight thirty. Next week, those are rough. this week is uh, UAB is an eight. That's man. I would much rather be doing this show with you at eight o'clock than do it at freaking. 2 a.m. That, that's ridiculous. Brian Turner is inexperienced solely the reason LSU's offensive line is struggling at this point. Are they legitimately having communications problems? I don't know what you would say about today or what. Um, I mean, you don't perform the way you did last week, and then all of a sudden you're inexperienced and. Uh, there, there's just, there's, it's an LSU Arkansas game, 11 in the morning, 30 degree weather. And, uh, Arkansas had a good, uh, defensive game plan and, and, um, LSU, uh, didn't play their best. That's just how it works. But, uh, I do think Frazier had, uh, probably the worst day of all of them today. Oh yeah. He whiffed on a couple, no doubt. Uh, Dwayne official Kelly handles the press like a true professional, even though a sloppy win. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, Kelly's absolutely right. Um, there ain't nothing wrong with the ugly wins. Um, it, did, it's it's going to happen when you, when you make a run. Did um, you see his Michael Jordan comment? Yeah. And Harold Perkins <laughs> didn't know who, who he was talking about. Now BJ Ojolari went out and told reporters, he said, nah, he's screw He's screwing with y'all. He likes messing with people. Of course, of course he knows who MJ is. All right. Uh, boy, Brew. Uh, ugly games sometimes happen. Just glad LSU won. Can't be perfect all the time. Um, totally agree. I think it was just one of those days. And Brandon Reese, maybe this was just a typical letdown game in terms of performance. Um, Preston, you got um, a promo that um, going on with the yeah, Dead Soxie. Yeah, guys. So Dead Soxy, this was their score sale for this weekend. Well, the way this works is n however many points the Tigers score, you get that percentage off. However, Tigers only scored 13 today, but that's okay because Dead Soxy's got you. Okay, they're going to give you 35% off all their interesting LSU designs. Any order on the site, use promo code TigerBait, guys, after the show. Go deadsoxy.com, get you some of these awesome socks. I always hang them, you know, over my counter. They're incredibly comfy socks. 
you know they do dress socks they do saints colors if you like that mardi gras coming up all sorts of you know local flair designs they're coming out with more and more purple and gold designs every day mike i got you a pair recently didn't yeah I? show show them uh flip uh one of the uh, insides out and show them the little uh rubber nubs at the top that hold them up yeah no that's one of my favorite parts man that, that guys uh, nods, uh, man. especially uh, if you wear a dress sock and you you're going out uh you're at work you know that there's a lot of socks out there that'll slide and um those actually have little rubber nubs on them at the top. See that? I can't. That, uh, stand will hold on to your calf so the socks will not slide on you. Can't stand and it, so, and guys. If you like footies, I mean, they got you handled for whatever sock you're looking so for. So Preston honestly. finally gave me some pairs uh, last weekend, <laughs> and I wore. I actually wore a pair uh, to Kim Mulkey's presser. What was that Thursday? And yeah. um, it was either Tuesday or Thursday. I can't remember which day it was. Um, I dropped all the and, socks. Uh, they were awesome socks. I love them. <laughs> huh? I dropped all the socks. I have my sock display behind. I was trying to put them back, and boom, they all fall down. No, guys, they're great socks. Y'all go give them a try. Not to mention, when you use that promo code TigerBait, you're supporting your local site. If y'all enjoy these shows, that's part of how we pay the bills and keep our sponsors in line and, and let them know that they're getting value out of their money. So please support this show by supporting our sponsors. Sneaky win, says Daniel Hayward. Uh, Jamie McCrary, this is a great week for the players to look at to see if you don't pay attention uh, to details, it will. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, it's easy for BK because and the staff because they can say, see? See what we warned you about all week? Um, but, yeah, it, it's much easier, though, to have it be a teaching moment after a win than it is a loss. Um May sound dumb, but I think the LSU lineman could not get traction with the turf and the weather. Arkansas is used to this bad shoe selection. I thought of that, Barry, in the in the pregame. Um, I wonder how you know. I was wondering, you know, how many different pairs of shoes that Stringfellow threw into that eighteen wheeler that they drive up there, and did they have you know was there maybe a, a, a cleat or or a shoe that was maybe an in between model that might have been better off for that surface today that maybe they didn't have with them. I, I don't know the answer to that, but um, yeah, uh, that's, maybe that's rough. So. That's rough, man. I'm going to tell you what, when the, the turf, if you look at the ice, they were scooping up off that field, not snow ice. I promise you that field was hard as a rock. Did you Tough see where they, did you see where they were uh, hosing it down thinking that that would help them clear off the ice <laughs> yeah. and it actually made it worse. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm not sure the field crew. That? I'm not sure the field that's some, that, is, that's uh, some ag that's some Aggie jokes type stuff. That was rough, man. Yeah, here we go, Jay Jero. Everyone needs a nice socks, but we need Sazerac ride discount more. Well, I got you guys. If y'all tune into my show on Tuesday, you know that Tremonti's got the single barrel select Sazerac rye in their shop so y'all go check them out and make sure to mention tiger bait there see i get i get free promotion on this the comments do it for me you cannot beat tremontes they've got a great meat selection um when, how far are we away from having crawfish um usually february they bring them out and every tuesday during crawfish season tremontes gives you a crawfish special uh, he, he prices them at like you know a dollar fifty below the market i'm like mike how do you make money on that he goes i don't i just do it for the people uh it's really so nice good to just swing by there after it's so nice to swing by there after work and have them already done yeah right by parkview baptist guys corner of airline and jefferson so go check them out tremonti top notch meat uh you, you got to get in there uh Carl Dunn, we got the W, not pretty, but who would have thought LSU would have been playing for the West? Not I. Nobody. Um, look, I, obviously, we all know somebody who's a big homer and was saying right. 10 and 2, 11 and 1. But, um, I mean, what, what were we talking five weeks ago, right? Six weeks ago. Can they get to 6 and 6? This is going to be a disaster. Well, I was being a homer saying 8 and 4. I mean, really, like, I mean, at the Vegas over under was six and a half. So I pick above and then plus a game. I was being a big homer. So I, LSU's I blowing that out of the water. This is I finished. I finished at eight and four, but I was thinking seven and five. And so Let, let's put it like this. If you would have told your players, the, the, the people before the season that LSU should be eight and two and locked up the SEC West by this point, And that's the expectation for Brian Kelly. He is 
he is underwhelming me if he has not done this. We, you're crazy. That's so unreasonable, but here we are. I think there's a real debate to be had, even more so as these wins pile up for Brian Kelly that he's SEC Coach of the Year over Josh Heupel. I really believe that. He, he rolls into, the, into Baton Rouge with 39 scholarship players. Well, if he wins the SEC. And now he's going to Atlanta. If he wins the SEC, isn't that kind of hard to argue against? Yeah, I know you lost head-to-head, but guess what? If you upset Georgia in the SEC championship, <laughs> LSU was deemed the SEC champion. I mean, it's hard not to give it to him. Uh, Jamie McCrary, I love the culture that Brian Kelly has brought here. The team has uh, bought in so bought in so the, the sky is the limit, especially as time goes on. Uh, absolutely. Jeff Garman, I said six and six. Sorry. Um, you're not the only one, Jeff. I know they had LSU form- guys. Uh, I know some LSU former LSU players. I know some former LSU players that were at uh, with the biggest scrimmage that was, that, and they got in. And they left there thinking seven and five. Um, I think so. this LSU team, I think that's pretty indicative of this LSU team is playing above its talent. Mark Channel uh, should have Jaden Daniels hit, hitting short curls or crossing routes. Look, I think today was one of those days where uh, instead of calling those easy passes that LSU has thrived on all year, they're calling different plays. Uh, They're calling quarterback reads. They're calling, you know, uh, halfback draws. Instead of taking those easy passes, they opted to run the ball and run it like hell and then only pass when you really needed to pass. But, hey, I do give credit to Denbrock today. This was one of my notes during the game for – even though you were one dimensional, you still kept it unpredictable. They called some like, okay, fake toss quarterback keepers and some RPO type stuff. They still were unpredictable despite being one dimensional, which is new for LSU. Yo, why'd you do that? Zoom me out. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to, uh, there you go. Um, Donald Wright, uh, what is the sock website? I missed it. Definitely Christmas gifts. Deadsoxy.com. Excellent Christmas gift, guys. And if you do it now, it definitely will be here in time. Deadsoxy.com. But don't, but don't you need to give them a code or a link? Promo code. Look, I'll put it up on the screen again. Promo code. Up, 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 up. Got to take that comment down now. I got it. <laughs> All right. Hey. Promo code TIGERBAIT. Tiger bait guys, deadsoxy.com. Usually look, we have it on the site and on all my shows every single week. I put the link in the bio deadsoxy.com. Go to the colorways tab and put in the colors of whatever you're interested in. Here's some other designs they do. It's usually 25% off, but this week until the UAB game, when the UAB game starts, that ends. But for the next week, you're going to get 35% off. So you're going to get some really good socks excellent christmas gifts guys i can't recommend enough stuffing your socking with these sockings deadsoxy.com absolutely and i and like i said i wore a pair uh preston gave me some uh last week i i, I washed them put on a pair wore it to mulkies walked uh uh from the parking lot uh the pmac and back and and um very well made very comfortable um, i'm gonna add the promo code i'm gonna comment on that so if y'all for those of us who aren't you know good uh jay gerald agree with press and it would take an sec championship game win for kelly to take the uh, coach of the year trophy got a long way to go for that but confident will whoop uh uab and AM to get to atlanta uh needs deadly execution to win it i don't know that he has to um win the sec championship game to be coach of the year i think i think i i think there's a very strong case for him to be sec coach of the year just for getting there with, like I said, with 39 scholarship players and Vegas picking them with six point something wins in the summer. Uh, and also, where did the uh, media pick LSU in, in July at SEC Football Media Days? Do you remember where they, where they were picked then? Fifth, right? Fourth fifth or in fifth? The West. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So. Now, I'll say this for LSU's playoff hopes, I, I, I did want to, co- this, this was my one. 
I'm not being negative today, but this is the one point. LSU, if they beat Georgia, you're going to have beat Georgia, Ole Miss, Alabama. You're one of the hottest teams in the country, okay? You need style points to, to punch your way in the SEC, you know, as SEC champion with two losses. You need style points to punch your way in with that fourth spot because Tennessee is going to be sitting there with one loss. Georgia is going to be sitting there with one loss even if you just handed them a loss. You need style points. And you know what? LSU just gave the committee ammunition to be used against them. Yes, LSU won these big games, but look how sloppy they looked against lesser opponents like Arkansas even after they turned the corner. So that is the one negative if you're going to take a negative out of today is maybe maybe there's ammo to be used against LSU for a playoff pick. But hey, beat Georgia first before we talk about that, right? Yeah. Uh, Brandon Reese, I uh, felt that LSU had nothing to lose coming into the season anyway, but I'm pleasantly surprised, uh, though. I think a lot of people are, are with you, Brandon. Uh, the Tiger Blitz. Did Josh Williams have any D1 offers coming out of high school? Yes, oh, yeah, he, did. he did. Oh, yeah. He could have gone to ULL. Uh, I, didn't he have a Houston one, too? Yeah. I mean, he had some of those like group of five offers, but he said his dream was to be an LSU Tiger. And look, I'm eating a lot of crow because I told people, I said, look, if he's your fourth back, he's not as good as your fourth back typically is at LSU. How dumb am I? He's your what number was one back. What year was it? Was it 18 or was it 17 that Nick Brissett, uh, going to that year, the oh. big question mark was running back and Brissett went and ended up going over a thousand yards. 18. That was 18 with Joe Burrow. Okay. Yeah. And Clyde, yeah. Clyde didn't really fit into that offense very well. He was there, but they were like, you know, letting him dot the eye. But going into formation. that year, going into that year, we were talking about running back being a weak link, just like we were going into this season. Which, by the way, running back is still not exactly where you want it. I believe today was the first day where you got to rotate all four backs. So you're still which not is, there depth-wise. But and by the way, which is only only twice in, in all my years of covering LSU football that you were saying the running back position was a weak link. Oh yeah, that's never been a weak link. This is this is one of the weaker running back rooms we've ever seen at LSU, and that that's where we keep on talking about this Frankenstein roster or bubble gum and paper clips putting it together. That's one of the spots you're looking at it because you only, you still only have four guys to give you quality reps. Emery, playmaker, but he is a liability fumbling the ball. Noah Kane and Goodwin combined for seven carries for you today. Uh, Josh Williams emerging the way he has has been such a good thing. For I, this I love team. Josh Williams. 19 I, I, carries, I 122 yards, and the only touchdown today. Josh Williams, he's a great story. I love the way he runs. He's got a heart. He's a great blocker. Um, like I said on the show the other night, I know he's tired of being t uh, labeled as a former walk on, but it's it's a great story. It's a great story to tell, and it's a. And it's really a credit to him and his perseverance and um, him uh, betting on himself, if you want to call it that, you know, mm -hmm. um, he, he's, he's a role model. By Absolutely. the way, by the way, his offer list, I do want to run a correction. I thought it was UL Lafayette. No, it was just Lafayette, the school up north. He had offers from Stetson, Lafayette, Drake, and Dayton. He was a two-star prospect. So instead of taking one of those, you know, smaller school offers, he just decided to walk on at LSU. And I'd I don't say know why, but I, I thought he had a Houston offer too. But I look, I thought he did too, um, and I'm showing no on his profile. Okay. So I, I thought he had like UL Monroe and all those guys, but whew, man, <laughs> that's a pretty lowly next list. Next interview session, and they bring him out almost every week. I'll ask him. Yeah, I've asked to have – he's agreed to come on my show sometime this season, so I want to bring him on. And I, I kind of want to tell him straight up, man, look, I, I was hating on you, uh, and you've proved me wrong. Thank you. Uh, Barry Barbier, uh, Tennessee showed a lack of class today with that last touchdown. They're just looking for style points. They forget how many years they were down. Well, they need style points. It's um, not lack of guys, class. Guys, do me a They're favor. Trying. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the show. Please do that for me. It's uh, like I was telling you, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. No, no, it's just on Tennessee. It's just like I was telling you, LSU, you know, not getting their style points today. Okay, well, Tennessee is going to be the team you're up against If in that hypothetical. They can say we hung 66 on Missouri today. I, I don't think it's lack of class. It's padding your resume because you, you need help. Um. 
Jeff Garman blows my mind that Perkins completely overshadows an excellent player in B.J. Ojolari. Look, he's overshadowing a lot of great players on that LSU football team. And um, and like uh, they were saying on the broadcast, if you don't know his name, you better get to know him. And uh, and what was the other thing that um, he said? Uh, God dang, what's the former Alabama quarterback's name? Greg McElroy. Yeah, McElroy. Uh, can you imagine what this guy's going to be like in a couple of years? Oh, um, you just hope he stays on the field that whole time. You speaking always of, see- sp- speaking of McElroy. That dude has gotten really good, man. I, we touched on it a couple of weeks ago. I think he is getting better and better at his job. I like McElroy. He's always a fun too. guy to run into on the elevator, too. A, a nice guy. Um, he, I think he I'm, is getting really good. A lot of people like to hate on him because he's an Alabama quarterback. But yeah, I, I, I think know. he's a pretty and, good and look, announcer. I think he kind of rubbed people initially when he first got started. But I, I think he's getting a lot more polished and he's getting better uh, every year. And, All right. Um, I got some insights on Perkins since we're bringing him up. Check this out. He tied school record today with four sacks. That's, that doesn't even mention all the other impact plays he had. He's also the first player in college football to have four sacks and two forced fumbles since Chase Young in 2019. So as a freshman, he's doing what you know, number two overall draft picks were doing. Kid's a freak, man. I, I hope Brian Kelly finds a way to keep his head in the game and keeps him on the field and we don't have a Stingley situation we're dealing with in the next couple years because we've seen it before where these freshmen, you know, they burst out and they they got their money all but secured and it, it's hard to stay motivated and focus on actually staying on the field versus protecting yourself. Um, if he stays on the field and stays focused, he's going to have a fine career for LSU, like an all-time great career. Uh, uh, Jared Schuler, uh, McElroy just needs to get rid of his announcing partner. Who was in there with him today? I'm trying to think. I know. Was that Testator? I can't remember who he had with him. Uh, Testator is really good, too, I think, though. I didn't have any problem with the announcing today. It was one of the few games we actually get to stay home and <laughs> yeah. watch the game on TV. I, I thought the announcing was fine. Touchdown, Bama. Uh, is, is it, it – there you go. 24-24. 24-24. We got ourselves a ball game. Uh, 123 left in the third. So maybe we hop off the show and get to watch the fourth quarter there. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, uh, go to Tiger Bait. Subscribe. We want to uh, try us out for $1. Everything is up there. We've got Pittman video, uh, Brian Kelly. Um, we've got uh, Brian's analysis, Preston's game story. And, and a lot more on the front page of Tiger Bait. Like I said, I was at Holy Cross at St. Paul's last night. I've got Kobe Young video. That kid is underrated. Um, uh, wait till you, you see him and hear from him. I really like his athleticism uh, for the class of 2024 wide receiver that uh, LSU offered back in June. And he is definitely a take, and he's definitely underrated. Uh, we'll have that for you and a lot more recruiting uh, updates uh, I think they're going to have another nice group of visitors for the UAB game. And so uh, we got LSU men's and women's basketball kicking into gear. So we've got a lot coming your way on, on, on tigerbait.com. No doubt. And I uh, want to thank Dead Soxy, but of course, our main sponsor, uh, attorney Kenneth P. Haynes, for sponsoring the show. Uh, please, guys, hit that like button on the way out and also hit the subscription button and the notification bell. And uh, you guys enjoy, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And, um, well, uh, well before will be we wrap live. it up, yeah, pre- I, go, go ahead. I want to put this up here before we wrap it up because it's a good plug into next week. Barry Barbier, uh, Barbier, with Hurley committing to LSU next week, what happens if Daniels comes back next year? I sure hope Walker. First off, Colin Hurley's a 2024 guy, so in peck Ricky Collins more so than him. Um, I, I think one of the guys on the roster might transfer out. I don't. I, I think Nussmeyer might be your odd man out. You hate speculating on that kind of stuff, but I don't think it impacts your recruiting because no matter where they go, they're going to have to compete with dudes. Um, speaking of Hurley, he'll be my guest on Tuesday night. So y'all come check this out. Hit that subscribe. Hit your bell for live notification Tuesday night at 8 p.m. I'll be live with LSU quarterback commit Colin Hurley. I'm very excited for that show. Go ahead, and I'll Mike. have uh, Buddy Sanji with me. And of course, uh, Buddy is uh, 
the best in the business and a, and a sports talk legend. And um, I always like get, getting his uh, views uh, midweek. And we'll talk, about, he'll talk more about this one. But um, uh, y'all got the best a- midweek show out there of any LSU channel. I'll be honest. Look, I like what I do every midweek with my guests and all that stuff. Man, y'all, y'all got the best mid show, midweek show out there. If y'all aren't watching that, I don't know where you're at. We've been putting up some incredible numbers, and uh, Preston's been getting some great guests, and Hurley is is really a great kid. Like I said uh, last week, uh, he is what we call a Pied Piper. If you remember Russell Shepard's recruiting process and what a uh, because of his personality and being an extrovert, how well he helped recruit, uh, I think Hurley is going to surpass him. I think he's that kind of kid. Um, he's works DMs. He messaged me earlier to uh, – before we went live about how it was a great win for LSU. The kid is going to be a huge asset for Brian Kelly and his staff uh, recruiting the whole coming year. And so um, you're talking about a Caleb Williams uh, caliber no quarterback. He's going to be a five-star for the class of 2024. He doesn't have the legs of Caleb Williams, but when you watch his film throwing the ball, it reminds you a lot of Caleb Williams, man. Kind of, the, you know, just a lot of control, a lot of oomph on his balls, man. He's going to be a player, man. Colin Hurley, watch out for him. I mean, I I, I think he's – they bumped him down from five-star to four-star when he went classes. I think he's still a five-star in my mind. Yeah. Um, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is he less valuable now that he's just coming here a year early? That's dumb. Get get, yeah. get your act together, recruiting industry. I'm not going to throw any shade. As, as tempted as I am, I'm not going to throw any shade, I promise. All right, guys, hit the like button, share, subscribe, uh, notification bell, the whole works. Thank all of you guys for participating. Have a good rest of the weekend, and uh, we'll see you on TigerBait.com. I'll be on on the message board all weekend uh, answering questions. Good night.